Hi, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you through some of the hand tools that we will use once we're in the college, in the workshop and some of their uses. Here we start with the screwdrivers. Uh, this one here is a Phillips head screwdriver or a cross head. Um, use that again screwdrivers mainly for putting screws in and taking them back out, really simple, really basic. Um, we've also got here the plain screwdriver or flathead screwdriver, again for the same use, putting screws in, taking screws out, really nice and simple and basic, but it's good for you to see and understand. Here we've got a couple of different sets of pliers here. We've got First we've got the sort of standard ones that most folk will have seen. Um, usually used for just holding things in place firmly or holding something firmly in place. Um, up here you've got the teeth in here for gripping. And then down here at the bottom you've also got jaws here for cutting. Um, pretty standard, more sort of traditional shape of pliers. Here you've got long nose uh, or needle uh, pliers. Again, just for the, these ones I've used before for just kind of getting things that are further reach, you know, in hard to reach areas you can get down, you can hold it in place. Uh, so, yep, there we go. We've got the needle nose and the sort of just a standard set of pliers there. Here we've got a pair of side cutters or snips. Um, mainly use these for stripping wires. That would be my main use for them. Um, but, yeah, basically anything that needs cut open the jaws up, nice sharp jaws here, um, these ones in fairness probably could do with a bit of a sharpening up but yep that's what you use these for side cutters or snips and like I say I'd use them mainly for cutting stripping back wire. Here we have spanners, uh, these come in uh, different sizes, um, you've got an open end at this end and a ring end at this end would use these for removing bolts and nuts. You could either use the ring end to hold the nut on one end and the open end on the other end. Um, these come in different sizes, uh, different width of jaws. The ones you see here, we've got a 22mm one, which is the distance between here and here, and again here and here. I've also got an 18mm spanner here as well. Again, the distance between here and here and here and here will be 18mm. Uh, depending on the size of the bolt or nut that you're removing. Here we have ratchets. Uh, we've got three different ratchets here. Uh, we've got the quarter drive ratchet here, we've got the three eighths ratchet and the half inch ratchet. Ratchets are a, a really useful tool. Um, when you're using say a spanner um, and you have to take things off and you have to keep taking the spanner off on the nut or the bolt, a ratchet kind of eliminates that and I'll show you how that works. Um, so with the spanner, you've got it here, you know, if this was in a tight position you might have to keep taking it off and putting it back on. With a ratchet, I've got a 3 8 ratchet here and a 13mm socket. The socket goes onto the ratchet and then you can put the socket on the end of the bolt. You've got two settings on the back here, off and on. So I've got it set to off, which means it'll ratchet clockwise and then pull down anti-clockwise to loosen the bolt off. But you'll notice with the ratchet mechanism, I don't ever have to take the socket and ratchet off. And that way, the nut will start to come off without having to continuously take the spanner off. So with the ratchet, we just keep the ratchet on. Whereas with the spanner, we might have to keep taking it off and on. So these can be a real useful tool. Um, obviously we've got the three different sizes here uh, from the half inch. Half inch is for your bigger nuts and bolts, three eighths is sort of medium size and then your quarter drive is from say 5mm to maybe 13mm at a push. Um, so different sizes for, for different sizes of nuts and different sizes of bolts. What we've also got here is this thing here. This is an extension. So sometimes we might find that a bolt or a nut is in a hard to reach place or further down in, into the engine bay if we're working on the engine and we can't quite get to it. So we, what we can do is we can put an extension on the end of there um, and then we can put our socket on the end of that. And then that just gives us, you know, a bit more reach and for those hard to reach nuts or bolts. So that's ratchets, um, very, very useful tools and uh, something that we'd use a lot in the workshop. 
Here we've got some hammers. Um, well, we've actually got a mallet here, and here we've got a ball pin hammer. The mallet, we'll start with that. Um, this has got a rubber, a hard rubber head on it. Um, what we would use this in the workshop for is for hitting something that we don't want to leave a mark on that we can possibly damage. Um, sort of thing I would really use this for was if you were, say, we're taking a, a wheel off in the workshop and the wheel was stuck onto the hub. We can give the back of the rim a hit with the mallet and get the wheel off without marking the rim. The ball peen hammer, um, again, if we're using chisels or punches, um, we obviously need something to hit it with. Uh, so the flat end on this, this would be the tool for the job. So we've got a flat end on this end, and on this end we've got the ball end. Uh, with that, with the ball end, that's for if we're doing some sort of metal work and we needed to shape something to get it into the correct place or the correct shape, we can use this to shape the metal and uh, get it into place. Useful tools, everybody's seen hammers. Um, there's lots of different types of hammers you can have out there. I've just picked two, one, two of them that we would use in the workshop. Uh, you know, they are probably the most common ones to use. Here we've got two different torque wrenches. Uh, we've got a 3 8 version, the smaller one here, and we've got a half inch version here. Again, the half inch and the 3 8 just uh, refers to the size of the, the head here, uh, half inch again being across there. Uh, torque wrenches, we'd use these where it's where a nut or a bolt has to be tightened to a specific setting, where it's crucial that it's tightened correctly. Um, on cars in general, pretty much everything that's a nut, a bolt, a screw will have some sort of torque setting, uh, usually given in newton meters. Uh, on the torque wrench you'll see here there's a scale and you have it in newton meters. Uh, I've set this one to 110 newton meters, which would be something for, you know, if you're tightening, say, a, a wheel bolt or a wheel nut. Um, there'd be specific tightening torques that we'd have to look up the manuals for, depending on what type of car we were working on. What we do is, again, similar to the ratchet, we put the socket on, but with a torque wrench, once we've set it to a specific setting, we put the socket on the end of the bolt or nut, and we ratchet it down until we hear a click. Uh, certainly on these ones here, it'll click when it's at a specific, when it's tightened up to the correct setting, you'll hear a click. More modern ones, sometimes you can get electronic ones now where you can hear a beep, but the ones we'll be using in the college will click, just like these ones here. This tool here is called a piston wind back tool. So if we were replacing, say, the front or rear pads for that matter, um, and we needed to push back the piston, this is the tool that we would use. Um, what we would do is this part here would sit against the outer part of the caliper and this end here would sit against the piston. Once we've got that in position, we can unscrew this part here till we get it to the correct distance that we need. And then using the handle here, we twist that in. As we do, the threads will push this part here into the piston and the piston will retract back to the position that we need it to if we are replacing the pads. Um, there's different attachments that can go on the end of here. This bit comes off and you can put different adapters for different size calipers. Um, if it's rear calipers, sometimes they need to be wound back. So you would get ones in these two pins here would locate into the piston on the rear caliper. And again, when you spin that, it would twist and draw the piston back. Front ones we would just use this and it would simply just push against the piston and push the piston all the way back 